Good morning. God is good all the time. We welcome you this morning. We're glad that you're here. We worship together as a Matthew 25 church called to be a ministry with and for the least, the last, the lonely, the left out. We strengthen ourselves here and go forth to serve others. Along those lines, we've put up some new sign-up sheets for 2022 with regard to our mission meals. Those are actually on the bulletin board where we used to have them. They're in the main entryway of the church. So be thinking about a month that you might take on a Sunday or a Thursday lunch. Uh, begin to sign up for next year. We've completed all of the ones uh, now for this year, but that is part of our Matthew 25 ministry, and we thank you for that. A little later on in our service, Daryl Moorhead will be offering our stewardship testimony again. Those of you who were here in person last week heard that testimony. As you know, we had some technical difficulties with regard to the live stream, and our online community did not have the opportunity to hear that testimony. So I've asked Daryl a little later on in our service. I'll call on him just like I did last week, and he will uh, share again the stewardship testimony for this year. This is Reformation Sunday. 
where we remember that shift uh, in our church that created the Protestant movement of which the United Methodist Church is a part of. Many denominations and churches came out of that Protestant movement led by the great reformer Martin Luther. He composed a hymn in the 1500s, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Let's stand as we share these verses together. Be mindful of those around you as you sing. pray together this morning. Heavenly Father, in this difficult world, we are given this reprieve to come before you and simply worship. We have this privilege of rest in your presence. Lord, help us to not take it for granted. Help us to use this time to rest before you, but also to gain in our strength strength and understanding of your word, of your great love, and of your unending mercy. Lord, you know the prayer needs of your children. Lord, hear our cries this day. Give calm to the restless, strength to those facing illness, joyful memories and a full heart to those remembering loved ones past. O Lord, help us to remember that in all these things, in all the trials, the tribulations, and yes, even the joys, help us to remember that your love is undefeated and sufficient for our every need, every need, large or small. We pray today in the name of Christ our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying these words, Our Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. As always, we thank you for your faithful stewardship during these times. Uh, if you're in person, of course, we have offering baskets at the entryways. You can use the e-giving portal that you'll find on our website. Uh, you can mail in your donation. It is greatly appreciated. As always, uh, we hope that you will visit our website frequently so that you can note all that's happening, the various schedules of activities uh, and events that are happening. Now, our youth have worked very hard. All of our young people here today, as you leave, uh, the youth have put together a treat bag for you. 
uh, because we know this was a special weekend for children uh, in our neighborhoods, and so our youth have put that together. Make sure you pick one up uh, for your child. If there's someone that you know of that would appreciate one of those, take one for them as well, because our youth uh, assembled plenty of those uh, to sort of remember our kids uh, during this weekend. Daryl Moorhead's here. He's going to offer for us a stewardship testimony regarding our stewardship campaign for 2022. We appreciate Daryl being here uh, this morning. Daryl. <clears throat> and we'll move that mic a little bit. For those watching on live stream, good morning. And for those that were here last week and you're back this week, good morning again. Uh, I'm here today to call attention indeed to the stewardship campaign and in particular the letter that was sent out last week from the church. Uh, it has all the information we need on, on uh, the 2022 budget. Uh, and more importantly, I'm here to emphasize the fact that there was a pledge card in that mailing. And indeed, that's the only stewardship mailing that we're going to get this year. Uh, so we want you to be mindful that that letter, that information, and that pledge card is important, and we'd hope that you participate in our ongoing ministries. Uh, last year at this time, if you remember, our church was completely closed down. Uh, our committees didn't meet, not knowing what our operating expenses or income would be during the COVID shutdown. We decided that this year in 2021, we would simply just take our 2020 budget and extend it into this year. This year, however, in an effort to return to some degree of normalcy, our committees did indeed meet and we formulated a 2022 budget that's actually slightly lower than the one we've been operating under for the last two years. So again, it's important to be aware that this letter, this mailing, this pledge card is the only mailing that you'll get as we try to be good stewards and keep our costs down. The motivational message for the stewardship campaign this year is the hymn number 364, Because He Lives. Both the words and music are very recognizable, particularly interesting that this is a relatively new hymn written by William Gaither in 1971. Actually, I might add, he wrote the very recognizable, He Touched Me as well. The familiar refrain from Because He Lives is, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, All Fear Is Gone. Because I Know, He Holds the Future, and Life Is Worth the Living just because he lives. Now, at first, when Ken told me that this song was going to be the stewardship theme and being relatively familiar with the words, my immediate reaction was, I'm not so sure I see a stewardship message here. But boy, was I wrong. This, this song is actually the essence of stewardship. It's why we as a church do what we do. In three short verses, you'll find all that God offers as mentioned in the scriptures. You'll see God's presence his presence to surround us, as expressed in Matthew, I am with you even until the end of the world. You'll see God's peace, his peace to secure us. From Philippians, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In this hymn, you'll see God's power, his power to strengthen us, as expressed in Ephesians, where we're instructed in one of Paul's letters to seek God as a source of strength and overcome and endure whatever trials may come your way. The lyrics of this hymn also show God's purpose, his purpose to stir us. That's from John 26, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And also John 14, because I live, you also will live. Finally, in this hymn, you'll see God's power, his power to satisfy us. Dark days won't last. Nothing is beyond God's power. Better days are coming because he lives. As a Matthew 25 church, what better stewardship message is there when we spread the gospel to others about God's presence to surround us, his peace to secure us, his power to strengthen us, his purpose to stir us, and the promise to satisfy us. Your faithful giving makes all of our ministries here at Bridgeport United Methodist Church possible. And through all the difficulties and all of the disruptions of this past year, you have been good stewards in maintaining our ministries. As always, 
We cannot say this enough. Thank you for your continued support. Thanks. Thank you, Daryl. We look forward next week to having you repeat that one more time. <clears throat> But as most of you know, we do still have quite an online presence with many people, and so we do appreciate that testimony. Many of the people who are watching by live stream, that's the first time that you've heard the testimony, and we do thank Daryl for his dedication in offering that during this time. By the way, we do have a, a response tab on our website for the stewardship campaign this year. The first time, you'll see a tab on the opening page, Stewardship 2022, should you choose to make your offering in that regard. Also, if you aren't comfortable putting your name on the estimate of giving card, uh, that's okay. Some aren't, but you know you intend to give regularly. If you put an amount there and send it, it still helps us because it helps us know that we can count on that moving forward in our mission and ministry for 2022. Friends, generations of Christians have been sustained by the basic beliefs that we express together when we say historic creeds such as the Apostles' Creed. So this morning, I invite you to join me again in saying together what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. It's always wonderful to have our choir sharing the word in music. You'll note. Uh, some places that the congregation will be invited to join with them as we share all hail the power of Jesus' name.
as you are able, will you give witness to your faith by standing as we hear Paul's letter to the Philippians. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, Being born in human likeness and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So we're continuing our series, the top ten letters of Paul, and we come to the book of Philippians, in which Paul reminds them that followers of Jesus Christ are called to have the mind of Christ. Especially when I was a teenager and I didn't see eye to eye with my father on everything, as is probably uh, very common, my dad sometimes would say to me, son, we need to have a talk. We really need to have a meeting of the minds. Now what that really meant was is my mind needed to get on the same page as his mind uh, pretty fast, pretty fast. And almost always, that's what happened. I think sometimes the way that Christianity ends up being presented in our culture today, sometimes even by those who claim to follow after Christ, God would say to us, followers, we need to have a meeting of the minds. Because life is not about making up your own mind. Life is about allowing the mind of Christ to dwell in you. We need to have a meeting of the minds so that if we are to do the mission of Christ, we will understand that we must have the mind of Christ. So what does the mind of Christ look like? That is really the core of Paul's message to the Philippians summarized perfectly here in these verses in chapter 2. I've included an outline there. If you'd like to follow along, will also appear on your screen. First of all, those who have the mind of Christ set self aside so that others can get ahead. Set self aside. Notice there in verse 4. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. If there were ever a verse of scripture that currently could be considered counter-cultural, it's certainly that one. Because everybody's about their own interests right now. What's best for me? Look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. If we've seen a common thread, and we've seen several, but one of the common threads we've seen so far in looking at these letters of Paul, uh, Dan, Ben, myself, all of us, Rick, have touched upon this. And that is the idea of selflessness, of moving self out of the center and allowing Christ and others to be the center. So also here in Philippians, Paul reinforces this again. Having the mind of Christ means setting yourself aside so that others can be fruitful and grow and get ahead, if you will. Like a lot of my stories, this one dates me just a bit, but that's okay. Because regardless of your age or stage, you know there's been different times in which there's been sort of toy crazes that have swept across the country. A particular toy or collectible just becomes so needed that the price goes up and the demand goes up. Well, I remember the days of the Cabbage Patch doll. Do you remember that? If you don't, just know it was a toy craze. So much so that they could almost sell them for any price and they would immediately empty off of store shelves. 
In fact, if it came known that a store was getting in a shipment of these Cabbage Patch dolls, people would line up before the store opened. And then it was Katie bar the door in terms of getting them off of the shelves. Well, I had gone to one of those stores myself one day, unaware that it was actually one of those days that they had received one of these shipments. By the time I arrived, they already had two register lines all the way back through the aisles, and they were completely sold out. I didn't care. I was there for something else. They had these two registers designated just for that, so that those of us who were there to pick up normal items could go and check out elsewhere. Well, I remember as I was waiting at the other register, a woman walks in with her little girl. I see them kind of talking to a store clerk there, and the clerk obviously is telling them, it's already sold out. And the little girl collapses in tears, complete tears. Her hopes for the Cabbage Patch doll, gone. Then something quite fascinating happened. A little boy, yes, a little boy with his dad, had his own Cabbage Patch. He saw the little girl in tears, and there was a moment of hesitation, but then he walks over and he hands the Cabbage Patch doll to this little girl. She immediately, well, the dad, no doubt, had waited in line prior to the store opening. <laughs> he couldn't catch himself, and you'll know why I say that, because before he could even do anything, he's like, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? And he stopped himself short. Now, I understand, and my apologies, we know that the man was probably saying that in vain, but see, I was the preacher in the store, so I'm thinking, you know, he accidentally got that right, didn't he? Jesus Christ was doing something in that moment because a little boy was putting himself aside to bring joy to someone else. And I thought, man, what if that young man grows up with that same mind and that same attitude? You know, he's going to make an impact because you think, well, that was a pretty small thing. Small things add up to large impacts, don't they? Small things add up to large impacts. And friends, yes, it might be trivial to think of it in terms of a toy, but there's plenty of other opportunities, real-life opportunities that we have when we will choose. Will we put ourselves first or someone else? Will we look to our own interests or to the interests of someone else? Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Set self aside. That's what he did for us. Set yourself aside so that others can get ahead. If we are going to do the mission of Christ, we must have the mind of Christ. And this is the mind of Christ. Secondly, those who have the mind of Christ pour out themselves so that others can be filled. The word there in verse 7, if you see it, it's the word emptied. Talking of Christ, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave being born in human likeness. Bible study side note, that Greek word there is kenosis. And it literally means to pour oneself out completely. That's why this translator chose the word, word emptied. He poured himself out completely for us, Jesus Christ did, so that we could be filled with the presence and the power of, Jesus, of the Holy Spirit. So also, those of us who are called to have the mind of Christ, will we pour ourselves out into the world so that others can be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit? Fred Lincoln tells a story of, in his younger days, he committed some indiscretions, some misdeeds, and his sentence was community service. He was sentenced to a certain number of hours of community service over a several-month period. He said he served many and most of those hours at a shelter near, in the city near where he lived. He said when he first got there, he met the director, he met some other people. He was introduced to a volunteer by the director. He said, her name is Anna. We call her Amazing Anna. Fred Lincoln says, I was younger then, I kind of scoffed under my breath. Yeah, yeah, amazing, Anna. But he said as he spent the first day there, he realized Anna was there helping to serve breakfast, clean up afterwards. Anna was there helping to serve lunch, clean up afterwards. In between, she was in the dormitory area, cleaning up, cleaning the bathrooms, emptying the trash. In the afternoon, she was in the clothing sorting area of the shelter, 
In the evening, she was there at supper time, helping to serve and fix and clean up. Lincoln says, I was only there one day and I was completely exhausted. I was totally spent. But here was Anna, still at it. And he said, when I would show up for my community service hours, the days that I was appointed to be there, there was Anna. Same thing. So I finally said, the director, how is it that every time I come, she seems to have the same day of working here? The director said, well, that's easy because she's here almost every day. Lincoln goes on to say, amazing was probably an understatement in describing this woman's service. Amazing Anna was exemplifying the mind of Christ. She was spending herself emptying herself, pouring herself out so that others, literally, spiritually, and physically, could be filled and could be lifted. Friends, if we want to do the mission of Christ, we are called to have the mind of Christ. And this is the mind of Christ. As a community of faith, we pour ourselves out so that others can be filled This is our call. Finally, those who have the mind of Christ are willing to give up their reputation and status so that others can know God. Again, this directly correlates to what Christ has done. Did you see that in the scriptures? Verse 6, it says, Though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. Though he was in the form of God, he did not regard his equality with God. Talk about status, right? He's the son of God. But he set that all aside. He gave it all up to take on human form, to dwell among us, to show us the way to the kingdom. This is what Christ has done for us. That's why Paul says, let this mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. Giving up his status, his reputation, so that others could come to know God. Now, I've shared the story of my grandfather's conversion on more than one occasion. I'll shorten it this time in a little different angle. Some of you may not have heard, but my grandfather on my mother's side, one time in his life, he was a hard-living, hard-talking, hard-drinking man. Sometimes very difficult to be around. Oftentimes after work, he would frequent a local bar there in town. There was a man in my grandmother's little Baptist church, the name of Blaine Chapman, who knew that my grandfather frequented that establishment. And he would go there and sit with my grandfather and talk with him and share with him And say to him, if you ever need anything or want to make a change, give me a call. Went on for years. But one night, my grandfather, alone at home, decided to call Blaine Chapman. Don't know why exactly, but that was the night. And Blaine Chapman came over to my grandfather's house. And there in the living room, he had a prayer with my grandfather, and he accepted Christ into his life. And I'm telling you, the transformation was absolutely total. Later on in life, I watched my grandfather lead a prayer in that Baptist church. (laughs) I watched my grandfather stand and give testimony. The same mouth that cursed God frequently was now praising God. But the angle I want to take on that, today especially, is to say, can you imagine this, you know, upstanding member of the Baptist church going into that establishment? And the people seeing it say, well, you know, there he is, Blaine Chapman, going into that bar, that hypocrite. Can you imagine that? What's he thinking? He's supposed to be a good Christian. There he is going. You can hear the whispers, can't you? You can hear some of the gossip. But he didn't care. He didn't care about his reputation or his status. He didn't care about his image. 
He didn't care about what the expectations of others might have been. He knew there was someone there that needed a significant connection and ended up connecting that person to Christ. And that was my grandpa. And I tell you, literally, it changed the directional course of my family at that moment in time. Why? Because he had the mind of Christ. Gave up his own reputation and status so that someone else could come to know. In fact, Kenneth Kinghorn in his book, Dynamic Discipleship, tells a very similar story about his pastor friend, Russ. Russ was a pastor of a large Midwestern church. Every Monday morning at a standing appointment with three prominent businessmen, they would have breakfast together in this diner. They were great supporters uh, of his church, and they liked having that closeness, uh, insideness with the pastor, and so they always looked forward to it. And Russ says he walked into the diner one Monday for that normal breakfast meeting and appointment. And this time as he looked at the well-dressed businessmen, they waving him over, over here, pastor. He happened to look past and he noticed a man he had not seen before sitting in a back booth, shabbily dressed with his head down. And Russ says, in that moment, I paused. And I looked at my friends, still waving me over. And I looked to the man, and I looked back to my friends and said, not today, guys. And I walked over and I sat down with this gentleman. Russ says he introduced himself to the man. And then he said his name and what's your name? And the man began to cry. Russ said, I'm sorry, did I say something wrong? He said, no, you don't understand. No one has actually asked me my name for 10 years. You're the first. A transient who had moved from town to town, place to place. Long story short, and you can read more about it in this little book, that man eventually started attending Russ's church. And he himself became a follower of Jesus Christ. Now, it was just one moment in time, right? One little choice, literally 10, 15 seconds there on the threshold, right? Of a decision. And he decided, not today, I'm going back here. And sometimes that's what it is, my friends. It seems to be a small choice, a short amount of time in the whole lifespan of things. But we make the choice to give up our own status or the expectations of others or the images that we're so set on maintaining. We set those aside, give them up so that others might come to know God. Friends, if we are to do the mission of Christ in our world, we must have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you as was in Christ Jesus. Hear the Lord asking us for a meeting of the minds and then respond, Lord, will you mold and shape the mind of Christ in me? When we pray that prayer, we are well on our way to faithful and fruitful living for the kingdom. Let us pray. Oh God, forgive us <clears throat> for so much of the time we want to make up our own minds. We want to mold our own attitudes that they might be in accordance with our own views. Help us to hear your word today that you might make the mind of Christ in us that you might shape a Christ-like attitude deep within our spirits, that you might mold us to be more and more like him so that others might come to know your great love. In the holy name of Christ, we pray. Amen. We invite you to reflect upon these things for your own faith walk. How might you need to open your life more to God creating the mind of Christ within you? How might we as a community of faith open ourselves more to reflecting the mind of Christ in our world that persons might come to know him? 
All praise to thee for thou, O King divine. We note especially verse 3 when we get there. Let this mind be in us which was in thee. Let's stand as we share together. good to be in the house of the Lord today. We're grateful for your attendance, for your participation. We're grateful for those who join uh, by live stream as well. Remind you, next week is fall back, and we'd be glad to have you at 945, uh, but, uh, it, it, because that's Sunday school, so we'd love to have you come and be a part of that, but uh, just remember that as we prepare to worship next week as well. Also, uh, young people, as you leave, the youth have prepared a, a bag. Someone will be back there to make sure you get one of those, take that along, uh, you can take an extra one for someone if you know someone in your neighborhood. It might be a good witness to just offer that on behalf of the church to them during this time. Friends, we are called to not only reflect the mind of Christ, we are called to live within the mind of Christ each and every day. In his name, we depart to serve. Amen. <laughs>